Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is, as you can see, Jan Blomme. I'm the Regional Port Commissioner. And although I do know something about ports, I have not that much of understanding of, about uh, circular e economy. So it has the advantage, of course, that I can give you with a fresh eye some considerations, reflections on circle ports and circular economy. What is the proposition I want to make? Are port authorities serious about circular economy or aren't they? Eh? Is it an integral part of the a new strategy of ports or is it just a hype, a marketing strategy? I was very happy that I read those beautiful uh, um, studies of the, uh, of the, uh, on a circular economy, on the explanation of Elvira. Uh, Nadia, it helped me a little bit to, to, to see much better what it is. Eh? But as a matter of fact, throughout the history and throughout the past, let's say the past 25, 30 years I work in the port sector, I've seen a lot of hypes coming up and sometimes also disappearing. Eh? Remember before 2000, the containerization, everybody was focusing on uh, infrastructure. 2000, the millennium bug, a lot of investment in IT. Eh? 2000, when 9-11, Security, eh? all consultants were working on security. Uh, ESPSS, for instance, uh, the, the directive. Then exponential growth between 2000 and 2008, eh? the China uh, uh, explosion in uh, maritime trade. And then we saw an increased attention for environment, but more in terms of uh, birds directive, natural reserves, that kind of things. Then we had the crisis of 2008-2009, where there was, for the first time since the Second World War, a tremendous drop of uh, trade in the ports. And then the buzzwords, and all the consultants were rushing to it, eh, were resilience, agility, and flexibility. Eh? If you have a problem, how do you, do you, do you work uh, with, with that? Eh? And then, not relatively recently, about uh, since 2015, the climate debate, before uh, Thunberg even, a reduction in greenhouse emissions, energy transition, and circular economy came up. Is it a hype or is it something serious for the port authorities? Well, the historical port setting, port development cycle. At the very beginning, I'm talking about the 19th century, long, long time ago, you had a strong direct involvement of the port authority. You had the service ports, the tool ports. And as the ports became bigger and stronger, port authorities didn't have the financial means to do everything and they started to focus on their core business, planning, master harbor office, basic infrastructure. And then ports even became bigger, but growth started to slow down. And then ports authorities started to think, how can we give a new impetus to growth? How can we continue to grow? Stronger direct involvement of the port authority in order to develop a sustainable growth model. Port community action, the active landlord, not a passive landlord as it was over the last, let's say, 50 years, just focusing on infrastructure, a 10-year plan in Antwerp, the first and the second mass vlakte in Rotterdam, and so on and so on. It's the port paradox, eh? industrialization, more trade, increasing standards of living, even more trade and bigger ports, and then not too big like the banks, not too big to fail, but maybe we became too big to grow, especially here in Western Europe, and not in China, there, they continue to invest. But you, can, you have to imagine that, let's say, uh, 50 years ago, the port of Antwerp, for instance, only did 25, 30 million tons. Today they are doing 230 million tons. And all those volumes need to be transported to the hinterland. Hmm? There was a small industrial cluster 50 years ago. Today it's, it's one of the biggest uh, petrochemical clusters in Antwerp. We have uh, ArcelorMittal, uh, Sidmar in, in Ghent, and, and so on. Huge, huge uh, industrial complexes have been added. And let's not forget we are maybe the most dense, one of the most densely populated areas in the world. Right? So there is a boundary. And we reach this. And indeed we need to think if public support for the old classical industry is decreasing, how can we find um, uh, new ways to grow? Right? How to revert the trend through new strategies? And I can assure you that this discussion is relatively recently. I remember when I came in 35 years ago in the Port Authority of Antwerp, well, we, we just were thinking in, in economic terms in new, new big, huge infrastructural projects. Which challenges? Well, 
maritime volumes started to stagnate. If you compare the total volumes of the uh, maritime traffic in the La Havre Hamburg range, it almost didn't grow less than 1% over the past 10 years. 1% in terms of um, uh, annual growth rates, quite often, compound growth rates. Before, between 2000 and 2008, it was almost 4.5%. Institute, and it, will it become better? No, I don't think so. Institutional shake-up, huh? all kinds of uh, uh, trade agreements which are put under pressure. So, beyond ports as economic engines, we need to think, are ports, uh, do, do they just have an economic function? They, they do quite obviously have, but maybe it's more than that. So, how do port authorities over the past three, four, five years are reacting? Eh? besides trying to find solutions for resilience, agility, flexibility, and things like that. Well, they're starting up port area transformation processes, a reconfiguration of existing port areas, um, implementation of more uh, flexible land planning tools, and so on. And secondly, and, and I think it's a, an amazing thing to see, to, to watch, the cargo volumes, which were of um, primary, uh, primarily primarily importance in communication of ports became less important. It played a smaller role in the external communication. Other indicators, before I have met it, every quarter, at the end of every year, ports were competing. We, we grow with 3%, 250 million tons. Port of Rotterdam, Port of Antwerp, Port of Hamburg, Zeebrugge, Ghent, and so on, were competing with volumes. Today, they are competing and saying, well, we had a, a, a tremendous nice index performance uh, in, in so far logistics is concerned, sustainability, look upon all the kind of projects we are doing today, innovation, economic impact are gaining ground. And they are looking for other activities. On and offshore is a classical one, bioenergy terminals, uh, tank storage became very important, which is a rather, rather conservative way, and a new range of uh, logistics activities. Huh? And that's important, eh? and they started to think ports like Rotterdam, for instance. I don't know whether you know it, they are doing 430 million tons, of which two-thirds, two-thirds, 66 percent, are dry bulk and liquid bulk. Coal, and from the liquid bulk, uh, the, the overwhelming majority is raw petrol, fossil. And I, in, in the discussions I had over the past five years, I'm, I, I could observe that, for instance, the managers of the port of, of Rotterdam are very, very uh, conscious about the fact that indeed, if the day uh, carbonization of our, of our uh, society will go on, that to be then, let's say, 15 years, they might be confronted with a tremendous drop of their uh, traffic and with the revenues that are linked to it. And besides of that, you need to have a license to grow. If you find other ways of growing as a port authority, you need to have public support. And they are doing it by two ways. They're trying to, ports, port and port, ports and port authorities try to communicate today by saying that they are one of the most innovative sectors of the national economy, working to a smarter port. Innovation and IT are, are, are in, the, in, in, the, in the focus of every uh, of the management of, of, that, uh, of the strategy of every port. Supply, rethinking supply chains, key objectives, data platforms. One of the, the new buzzwords in next port uh, in, in Antwerp, uh, port base in, in, in Rotterdam, and, and many others. In every port has its own data platform today. Um, Startups, support the startups, one of the points. Eh, you aren't a real big port authority if you don't have a little space in the port, mostly between the city and the, the let's say, the real port area, where you have a, a kind of uh, building supported and financed, of co-financed, for all, uh, giving all, all kinds of startups the possibility to, to, yeah, <laughs> to work. Uh, the bacon in, in Antwerp, for instance, and you have many other ones. And then working to a greener port, eh, environmental issues became more important, was already since the year 2000, eh, before we had a confrontation as a port authority, a confrontation policy with uh, all kinds of inter um, um, interest groups, environmental interest groups. And then in this period, we tried to find, as a port authority, to, to, to find a kind of, uh, um, let's say, common ground. 
Um, and of course, they started to, 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 to uh, develop a more enterprising role in dealing with environment, circular economy, and especially energy and climate change challenges, in working to a low carbon economy. As a matter of fact, I had the um, one, year of, one year and a half ago, I spoke with uh, Hans Bruining, the director of the, of the European uh, Environmental uh, 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 Desk. Uh, was saying you cannot imagine what the big companies today are already doing in terms of thinking of a uh, low carbon economy. And then, why ports? Eh? Because I think this is the theme of uh, this uh, working session. Why are ports maybe the, the, the place to be to find and to work out those strategies? Well, I think ports are most often, quite often, not always, but quite often, especially in the Delta, North Sea port. Uh, Antwerp, Rotterdam, Amsterdam are important industrial clusters with uh, large companies. And then you have the critical mass, the scale and scope, exactly the scale and scope to go for certain projects, to create business opportunities uh, regarding circular economy, as well as a possibility to take their role on, uh, the bottom-up approach. Uh, you can do it with small companies, with uh, middle-sized companies, startups to find invent, but if you want to roll it out, in, in, in volume, you need those bigger companies too. And then maybe, which is very particular, the presence of a port community and a cluster manager. This uh, enables the companies to interact faster, they know each other, huh? uh, to share experience and to explore new opportunities. And you can much easier work to common objectives. Uh, an, an example is a carbon neutral port in 2050. Uh, you can eventually um, um, try to convince all those companies and you have the scale and scope to do so in certain ports, not in all the ports, but in the bigger ports. Eh? And then um, direct steering is possible. Eh? You have those port authority, uh, mostly which have a, a relatively good uh, relationship with the, the companies in their port. And they can build centers of competence. I give you a few uh, examples. And then last but not least, eh, as has been said before, a lasting experience of transport and storage facilities for flows related to circular economy. You don't find it elsewhere, you, don't, you find it elsewhere, but to, to a much smaller extent. For instance, the presence of a dense pipeline network, which you quite often need, and the possibility of barging, of rail and so on, on a large scale. Then I think also there's a kind of Flemish specificity uh, as compared to, for instance, the Netherlands or Germany. Eh? In Flanders, I have the impression that it's uh, a more bottom-up, a more prominent role of private players. Um, you have the Blue Cluster, if I remember well is the name, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Flanders, where that's especially an initiative from the private sector. You have a maritime strategy in the Netherlands, but that's an initiative from the government. Hmm? Um, rather modest contribution of policymakers in Flanders, or in Belgium, whatever. Huh? Uh, while in the Netherlands and Germany it's more entered in policy and legislation. I give the example, huge uh, 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 amounts of financial means for circular economy, for sustainability, are freed a coalition agreement, in the coalition agreement of the new Dutch government away from the gas, you know, the gas in the north and Groningen. Right? They make a lot of money available to find out new ways of uh, alternative energy uh, sources. The closure of the coal mines in North and Westphalia, well, also the German government, which are not as poor as the Flemish and Belgian government, eh, are freeing a lot of financial means in order to support these initiatives. Here it has to come from the private companies, unfortunately, okay, largely. And then in Flanders, Belgium, I find a rather ad hoc policy, while in, in the Netherlands and to a certain extent also Germany, it's some more structured uh, action, or programs, action programs on uh, the national or regional level. We talked a lot about space. I always had a problem with space uh, because, as a matter of fact, when I was working for the port authorities, I never co was confronted with the, let's say, the link between space and circular economy. But it happened. Eh? For instance, three, two, three years ago, when uh, MSC moved from the, the right bank in the port of Antwerp to the left bank, a lot of space came available. Uh, when um, when the uh, General Motors of Opel plant in Antwerp closed. Um, then, of course, again, a new huge uh, sp uh, amount of space was uh, available, um, 80 hectares in one case, and then the Port Authority, especially 
looked upon a circular economy for the Churchill Industrial Zone and for the Del Verde Development Zone. And at a certain moment, you had the ERS case, a huge Saudi Arabian company who wanted to invest over there with 3,000, um, um, uh, created 3,000 uh, places for labor. But unfortunately, the business model didn't work. It was the idea of putting PET uh, bottles and so on into uh, methanol. Then, cases. The private sector, indeed, is in Belgium. Um, I think in Flanders, one of the most prominent players to do so. Uh, had, uh, t last week, I had a visit with Valenius. I always was really struck upon the fact that, indeed, a company like Valenius, four billion um, uh, turnover, a billion of dollars or, or euros, I'm not quite sure, of uh, business turnover. They are working to almost a carbon neutral drop in fuel for existing vessel, we are lining ethanol oil. And it should be there at Larry the first uh, deep sea vessels should be there in 2030. Can you imagine if this is successful, whether if this should be successful, what this would mean in terms of um, uh, greenhouse emissions and others? even very uh, funny things like, like uh, Roro ships with uh, sails, uh, which seemingly could have a 90% carbon reduction. Another point, Port of Antwerp, which I know uh, relatively well, uh, we were speaking of coalitions, of coalitions of the willing, coalitions uh, here and there. Well, a um, high-level concept, power to methanol, is worked out, uh, building a hydrogen, uh, hydrogen coalition, which Again, private companies like uh, Colrad and others. Them, uh, you see them everywhere. You see them here. Eh? Uh, uh, NG, Endeavour, Oil Tanking, and others. And this is a, a nice case, I think, of circular economy because you try to capture the CO2, to a waste product, as a matter of fact. And if you can combine it with hydrogen, you can make um, a methanol, which is a nice, which you again can use as well for energy purposes as, uh, uh, as a kind of feedstock for the petrochemical industry, which is so important for Antwerp and Rotterdam. Um, structured approach, I didn't find really uh, examples. I think the Port of Antwerp is one of the, uh, one of the, the only ones who has a sustainab sustainability report also using KPIs. But is that what it went? It's, it's a step uh, further forwards, but it's not that. Eh? So this brings me to some propositions. I had, when I prepared this uh, uh, small presentations, I had a problem with the definition and scope of uh, circular economy. It was not always clear to me. We had a, a good discussion about it last week. Is it just the reuse of resources or is it also the optimization of assets and resources? Because it has exactly the same goal. If you are speaking of energy, uh, of uh, uh, alternative energy uh, sources and so on, is it circular economy or isn't it? Uh, do we just um, um, go s solely for, for the, the reuse of the reducing waste of the, re of the reuse of raw, mat uh, of raw materials? But it's the same. We all, we all try to achieve some climate objectives, reduction of alternatives. Second, proposition number two, eh, is it port authorities? Is it self-interest or is it altruism, idealism? Well, it's, it's a, a mixture of both, of quite obviously. Yeah, I'll give you the example of Rotterdam. If they don't find a solution and new business models using circular economy, new, new uh, business models around energy, well, from the biggest port in Europe, they will become a medium port. An important medium port. Um, but altruism, I think indeed, uh, idealism, it exists. Um, port authorities, I can, I, I, I'm attending most of the boards of the Flemish port authorities uh, every month, and I can tell you that indeed there is a change of mind going on, and there is a willingness to pay for it, which is quite different as compared to, to let's say, 25 years ago. And then proposition number three, how to integrate and reinforce the scattered initiatives. I was so glad because the first thing I thought I'd have to do, I will make an inventory very quickly with all the, uh, the websites of the polls and um, of what I know about the board. But you did it already for me. Thank you very much. Uh, but then, of course, then I said, well, it's interesting. What, what, a, a number, what a lot of work in trying to find and put all those, those, those interesting initiatives together. But what's the next step? Hmm? 
And then, this is last slide, ladies and gentlemen, the conclusions on the post-2009 era port policy. Well, I think when I started with working for the ports, it was a very technical and infrastructural related uh, uh, vision and mission and strategy of ports. Uh, how can we deepen the river skelt? Uh, can we build a new dock? Uh, can we create new capacity? And today, um, we think to a more diversified strategic uh, approach from capacity driven to quality driven. How can we better organize in a cleaner way um, our, um, our supply chains? From a strong infrastructural uh, focus to a more efficient supply chain, from a more ad hoc approach uh, uh, to a firm proactive approach, it doesn't work anymore, the, the world is changing, and then oh, quickly, quickly, what should we do? Port authorities start to think in the longer term. Hmm. And then from a larger competition driven, there was a time that the people from Rotterdam were the big enemies of the port of Antwerp and the port of Gibraltar even more. Um, we are coming to a more cooperative setting. Hmm? When uh, we are working together as compared to, and especially in non-competitive ways like environment, sustainability, there is a real drive of uh, collaboration. And then, ladies and gentlemen, from a very reluctant support to environmental projects, and to a firm policy, and I've seen this, this transition in 20, the last 25, 30 years, it took some time, unfortunately, but to a firm policy of internalized sustainable development, although scattered and fragmented. And then with regard to circular economy, from a diversified but a very fragmented approach, how can we come to a more structural, structured development with clear objectives? I'm missing that. Uh, we, we, I can give you so many examples, eh? uh, port, North Sea port, oh, okay, we have a nice project with uh, ArcelorMittal and Dow, and we will capture 40,000 tons of greenhouse emission CO2. Uh, so what, is it, is it a lot or is it not a lot, 40,000 tons? I have no clue. Eh? Uh, a roadmap, ladies and gentlemen, eh? if we want to have a clear objective, how, we, how will we go there? Will we just uh, count and, 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 and all those little port authorities saying, oh, we've done that and we've done that and we've done that. I have no clue whether they make progress or not. And maybe we should think if we want to have a clear objective within 10, 20, 30 years, what exactly is needed? Eh? Look to the, uh, the climate uh, conference in Paris. Uh, we will decrease one point. Uh, we will try to reinforce that only 1.5 degrees Celsius, the temperature in the world will increase, maximum. But, okay, but what, what after that? How will you do it? Just, okay, by everybody is uh, doing its best and a little project here, a little project there and so forth. I think we need a roadmap, a roadmap as, at least for the, for, for the port and then a supportive legislative framework, which is needed. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'm here we go. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me still to show this beautiful slide to thank you, because ports and petrochemical industry can be beautiful. If you want to make a walk on the, uh, in the late evening, over there.